Hi, I'm Mark Mallett, and this is The Now Word for November 15th, 2024. It's been in my heart lately a sense of the Father saying, My people, I want you to pray with more confidence to me. You know, today is the Feast of St. Albert the Great, and he said, The greater and more persistent your confidence in God, the more abundantly you will receive all that you ask. Now, here's the thing. How do we square that away with the fact that many of us have prayed for physical healings, we've prayed for certain things that we feel we need, and yet it seems that God doesn't answer that prayer. In fact, some of us even question whether He hears us altogether. You know, I'm thinking of an example of a of a father I saw. He he came onto the accident scene of his daughter, and he's got his phone out, and he's showing how, I think it was a log or a beam, went right through the driver's seat. And you can hear him crying and then panning over to his daughter and saying, see how God answers our prayers. See how God hears us. You just got to believe. You just got to believe in the miracles you want from God and He will answer them. And yet, that made me think of May 19th, 1986, when my mom prayed that morning for the safety of my sister. But in a big snowstorm that day, a freak snowstorm, she died in a head-on car accident. So how do I square that away with this notion that if we just pray, God will answer our prayers. Well, I think it's wrong to look at God as a cosmic vending machine where we just pray and out the end comes our the answer to our prayers. I mean, if I pray to God, the Father today, and I say, Lord, my neighbor is a dimwit, strike him dead. Does God answer that prayer? Lord, I've always wanted a Porsche. I deserve it. I've saved up money. Lord, help me to buy a Porsche. Does he answer that prayer? I think the key, and here's the thing, here's the key to understanding prayer. Yes, we're called to persevere, and I'm going to get to that in a moment. But St. John says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, we have this confidence in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. There is St. John telling you what gives us confidence in our prayer. If we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And here's the thing. Sometimes God really does will something for us, but we're not asking Him. We're not coming to Him. In fact, we're like that doubter. And and James says, He who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. And that person must not suppose that a double-minded man... Uh, unstable in all his ways, will receive anything from the Lord. And so, if we come to the Lord and say, well, Lord, I need this, but you're not going to grant it. You never hear my prayers. You never answer them. Well, he probably won't. He will probably leave you in a place where your suffering will increase so that you finally do turn to him and say, Father, I need you. Hear my prayer. In fact, Jesus even commands us. He says in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, telling a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. And he uses the example of a widow who keeps begging this judge, knocking on his door saying, give me a just decision in my favor. And the judge finally does it. He buckles. But, you know, Jesus says he's he's kind of a dishonest judge for doing that. But then he says, Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will be he slow will he be slow to answer them? The answer is no, God will not when we're asking for the right thing. But then he adds, When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? And this is where I think that now word is really important. Because as Jesus said in in Luke sorry, Matthew chapter twenty four. Because of the increase of evil doing, the love of many will grow cold. And this is the problem now for many of us in the church. Our love is growing cold. We're looking at war spreading. We're looking at ideologies spreading that are trying to suppress our freedoms and literally bringing about the persecution of Christians. And we feel like God's abandoned us. We feel like He doesn't hear our prayers, that He's not answering. We look at how our shepherds going all the way up to the top seem to be in disarray and disorganized and and just off track. And we say, where is God in all of this? And that's where Jesus is calling us to have 
faith and confidence in him and not to let our love grow weary. As he warned in Revelation chapter 2, he says, you have endurance and you have suffered for my name and you have not grown weary. And so he's saying, some of you, you've persevered. Come on, you're here now. You're still going to mass. You're still receiving the sacraments. And yet he says, I hold this against you. You have lost the love you had at first. And so there's something even greater than persevering in prayer that Jesus is telling us. Something even greater than not growing weary. And that is love. Because it says in Scripture, love never fails. Here's the thing. Can you still love God and your neighbor when he says no to your prayer? Because when God says no to what seems to be a good prayer, like I've been praying for the healing of my ear, And, you know, it's so hard to communicate with my wife and children. It's humiliating to wear a hearing aid at the age of 56. It drives me crazy. And yet he keeps saying no when I ask him to heal me. There's something greater. And the something greater he's calling me to is to love him in spite of. And yet, at the same time, maybe God will answer that prayer in due season. He says, don't become weary. Keep praying. He tells us in the Our Father, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. And today, the daily bread he wants to give me may be very well the healing of my ear. And when it comes to the salvation of others, do you think God hears when you ask him to save your kids or your grandkids or for healing or deliverance? He does hear. But you see, he's the Savior. No one wants to save people more than Jesus who suffered and died for them, far more than you. He desires that all should come to a knowledge of him and be saved, it says in the, God, in the scriptures. And so, here's the thing. God knows how and when to save us when it's best. And for some people, because their hearts are so hard, it may not be until on their deathbed that your spouse or your loved one will turn to him. And that's why you need to persevere in prayer. Don't grow weary. Have confidence before God. Keep knocking on the door. He says, knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Because eventually, if we keep seeking God and knocking and asking, and he's not giving us what we want, I believe that eventually our knocking and our asking and our seeking, it begins to turn back to his will. We begin to say, okay, Lord, but I ask according to your will. And suddenly we begin asking in the heart with the prayer of the Holy Spirit who's inspiring and leading us. And then God hears that prayer. And so today the now word is be confident, be bold. You're a son and you're a daughter of the Father. Don't let Satan trample on you. Don't let him poke at you and say, see, God doesn't hear you. No, be bold and be confident. And if you have to wait, if God isn't answering according to your prayer, it's a call to a higher thing at that point, and that is to a love of God that loves him to the end the way he loved us to the end. I'm Mark Mallett. I'll see you again.